Hello everyone, this is Kyle Galaz with Poor to Pro Car Sales Training Podcast. Become a sales titan. Here we are at the end of season two. This is episode 10, The Greatest Close on Earth. Before we get into this episode, I would like to say thank you to all my supporters out there. I love opening my Facebook and seeing new friend requests from you guys in the car business across the world now. I love seeing your guys' posts of your sales, Facebook messages that you send me, your guys' showrooms, your guys' faces, your customers. I, I just love watching all your posts and seeing your videos. I love the car business through and through if you can't tell. Today I worked a 12 hour shift. We did a bunch of deals. I got to get out there in the nitty gritty on the showroom floor and close hard deals. And now I get to talk about the car business after. It's just, I love it. I love the car business and I hope you do too. That's what it takes to be become successful. You need to become obsessed with the car business and you gotta love what you're doing. And if you don't love it right now, you need to fake it because eventually you will fall in love with it and you'll fall in love with success. So keep up the good work. All right, let's get into the episode. The greatest close on earth. What is it? What is it, Mr. Podcaster? Kyle, sales titan. What is the greatest close on earth? On earth. Now, this is a controversial topic when I say this. I brought it up in my sales meeting a few weeks ago, and all the salesmen were like, puzzled look on their faces. But by the end of the sales meeting, they were like, yep, it is the greatest close on earth. We totally agree. And you've actually done this close, you just didn't realize it. So let's get into it. What is the greatest close on earth? The greatest close on earth is no close at all. Wait, pause, say that again. The greatest close on earth is no close at all. How's that even possible? Here's an example. I've worked at two different dealerships in my career and both dealerships had a salesman that I would walk by his office or his desk and listen to him with the customer and there's no close. There's no trick close, there's no odd number close, there's no credit rebuild close. He's not doing anything that I feel like is a close. He's simply sitting down, doing paperwork, getting it financed, and then going in to sign for, for the vehicle with the finance manager. What in the heck did that salesman do? Both dealerships had a guy like this that was selling 15 to 20 a month. The one I currently work at has a guy like that that averages about 20 cars a month. Here is what the greatest close on earth is. Here is how you set it up. And you've already done it. Now you're going to realize that you've done it. Haven't you ever had a customer that when you sat down at the desk, they just spilled the beans? Yep, we got 5000 down. We got great credit. Uh, we'd like to see 60 or 72 months. And, um, and then we'll choose which way we want to go. And you're sitting there like, I didn't even have to do anything. I'm literally just going to... I'm order taking this deal, right? How did you get to that point? How is the greatest close on earth? Because you're not closing a deal. You're literally just doing what they wanted. They gave you every bit of information and now you're gonna go out there with a, a payment and they're gonna pick a payment and go and assign for it. And then they're gonna leave with a car. What happened there? How did that happen? Okay, you ever see a salesman sit down with a, a pencil, a deal structure sit there and not say anything and the customer sits there and looks at it and then all of a sudden says okay yeah that looks good well, what what did that salesman just say he didn't say anything that is the greatest close on earth here's how you set it up the only way the greatest close on earth works is if they love the salesman love the vehicle and love the dealership okay if they just like you and they just like the car and they just like the dealership then that's good that's on par with any any place there's nothing different. Everyone just likes their guy and likes the salesman. When they just like you, like the car, and like the dealership, then there's going to have to be a close. They're going to have to be negotiating. There's going to have to be something to lock these people down. But if you can get the customer to love you, and not the will you marry me love, but the love like, I love this guy. He's, he's awesome. He's an awesome sales guy. And then you can do the same thing for the vehicle they're looking at by doing an awesome walk around building so much value in that car that it surpasses the price tenfold. If they're getting a bargain, wow, this car does all this? Wow, I love this car. And then you can get them to love the dealership by taking them on a tour, having them meet people, meeting the service manager, meeting your manager, meeting the GSM, meeting the owner, right? Getting them to feel like they're part of the, the dealership family and fall in love with the dealership and the story. 
Then, if you have those categories dialed in and they absolutely love it, guess what happens? They spill the beans. They tell you what it takes to, for them to buy the car. You don't have to close the deal. All you're doing now is paperwork because you've done everything right. If you've noticed in all the closing episodes of season two, you have to set up the close. If you wait until the desk to try to close a deal, you're in for a, a, a terrible run with that customer and you're going to have to give up every dollar because you've built no value in you or the dealership. But for the greatest close on earth to work, they have to love the dealership, love the car, and love their salesman. Now it's easier said than done because you still have to incorporate all the steps of the sale to get them to go through the process. But how do you disguise the steps of the sale um, as more of a not not much of not as much of a process, but as something organic and natural, right? You do that with building great rapport, making your customers laugh, making them feel at home while you take them through those steps. Tell them about yourself, but remember you have two ears and one mouth. You need to make sure you listen and ask questions because the more information you can get from the customer, the more you can use to build value and build rapport. Remember that they came to uh, learn about the car they want to buy, but they don't really want to know too much about their sales guys personal life. They want to know about your professional life and they want to talk about themselves. The sweetest word in, in any language is the, the customer's own name. So if that guy's name is Steve or Michael or Tracy or Heather, those are the sweetest words they can hear. So make sure you ask them questions and incorporate their name because you get their attention. Okay. So remember this, the greatest close on earth is no close at all. And the only way it works is there are certain categories. They can't like, like it or like you, they have to love it and love you love the dealership. I promise you it works. I've been using it for years. You get to the desk and it's, it's a, it's a no brainer deal. They're ready to go. That's how it works. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Next season is season three. We're starting the uh, season off with episode one, and it's going to be called The Perfect Salesman. We're going to be diving into what does it take to be the perfect salesman? Well, I got the answers. So make sure you guys tune in. Whatever format you guys are listening to the podcast on, whether it's Spotify, Apple, make sure you leave me a five star or the highest rating you can in a comment because I want to become the number one car sales trainer in the world. This is my new goal. Look out for episode one, The Perfect Salesman. This is Kyle Galaz signing out.